Good evening. <laughs> My name is Tony Shepley, and it is Thursday, February 4th, and welcome to our second annual, well, our first annual, <laughs> but our second virtual Anderson Dinner of 2021. Thank you to all of you for virtually attending. We have a great turnout tonight and a star-studded cast to present tonight's show. We hope everybody's enjoying their meals, and there's nothing like combining a couple of calories with a few kernels of knowledge. Our thanks go out to our friends down the street at Spoon and Seed for their cooking tonight, which we hope that you really enjoy. We're taking attendance through your registration with us, and we will email CSL Continuing Ed Certificates to everyone by the end of this week. For tonight's program, you will receive two Continuing Ed credits. The event will be a a mix of both live performance and some very special videos. We hope that you enjoy this format. Now code today is more important than ever. Tonight we'll demonstrate how working with Shepley and using Anderson products is the best way to assure yourself that you're meeting or exceeding code requirements on your project. So without further ado, it's time to bring on our own doctor of doors and windows our well-known sultan of swing patio doors and our wizard of wyland big doors our own showcase ma manager joe murphy who will review tonight's agenda joe take it away thank you very much tony for that wonderful intro uh our agenda tonight uh, we have a great program set up for you thank you for attending uh first we're going to start with brian harding from the anderson corporation who's going to give us an update on anderson products and services for 2021 and what to look forward to uh, then we will have a video featuring our own mark hambly and our shepley shop that highlights the assembly of an a-series frame and a recent project utilizing the new anderson fiberglass mulling system uh, and that's going to be followed by a uh, live Q&A with Mark Hambly. And then we will have our showcase showdown featuring Tammy Beer Santos, who is your window and door specialist from the Mid-Cape, Barnstable, and Chatham. And she's going to highlight some of our uh, 2020 Anderson projects that she was lucky enough to work with you all on this past year. And that will also be followed by a live Q&A. And then we're going to wrap it up with an announcement from Tony and Brian. So be sure to stay till the end. And also make sure uh, on the bottom of your screen, you're going to see a Zoom Q&A feature that you will use to uh, ask your questions. And uh, here is Brian Harding from the Anderson Corporation. Excellent. Thank you, Joe. What a great introduction. Uh, so a little different for a year in 2020. Uh, being in the industry for 35 years, I never thought I'd be doing a virtual dinner, but hey, dinners are dinner. I'm always up for eating. So there's not a lot of updates from Anderson this year, but I will tell you after 2020, if you can imagine, I believe some of you have probably visited our plant in, out in Minnesota. So our main facility is 65 acres under one roof. So if you can ever imagine what it took to keep that production line running, uh, which we were able to do throughout the year, uh, meeting lead times on most products. And I know you went through shortages on different types of products within our industry. So that's our goal. Our goal is to keep producing great quality products for you folks. And with that, I gotta thank you for your business. So let's get into a couple of updates. So as always, our A-series product, especially if we're gonna be talking about code tonight, um, that is our highest performing product. So if we're looking at double hung windows, we're talking about PG ratings of 50 and even on our coastal product up to 70, which for the industry, that is top notch. Um, some of the other things are the energy efficiency. And as we move into this new uh, 2021 and beyond, we're gonna see a lot more with energy efficiency. So one of the things with the A-Series we can do is do triple pane glass. We can get you a double hung window that can have a U-value down to 0.20, as well as offer all the products within the A-Series line with triple pane glass. So that's gonna meet and exceed code expectations for right now. And that's our goal to stay ahead of it. And with the performance of the products behind that, we're giving you something that'll work in the environment that we're selling here on Cape Cod. Beyond the A-Series, um, we also have big doors. So you heard the wizard of big doors, Wyland, Mr. Joe Murphy. 
and Shepley's has done a fantastic job up in their showroom of displaying those products. So we have a Weiland lift and slide door. We have an Anderson architectural folding door. And within the next two to three month time frame, we will have a multi-glide door with an automated motor system. So again, as we move into these big door projects, you need to show that product. And one of the key things is, as Joe and myself and the staff, we can go through all those things that we found out that can go wrong, we can make them right, but we can assist you all the way through the installation. Big doors is a category that's not going away. So we see the growth, we see this indoor outdoor living uh, and based on our current situation, a lot of people will like to have a lot more outdoor living. So that big door category is where we can assist with expertise through Shepley, through myself. Uh, and I depend on a lot of people to support those efforts behind me in Minnesota. So, you know, get to us, let us know about the project and we will assist you through it. With that, our 400 series and really for Cape Cod, that's been our time tested product. Uh, that product um, has gone through some minor changes uh, about a year uh, to two years ago, we improved the performance of that product to bring it up to a PG 40. So not quite the PG 50 and the double hung that you can get in A series, but still a reliable product that we've used on Cape Cod for many, many years. Uh, and we can still do a DP upgrade on that and bring it up to PG 50. And I'd be remiss if I didn't say we have storm combo units, one of Tony's favorite products uh, that we can even get you some better U values, uh, sound transmission and give you some better performance that way as well. So that 400 series um, is our time tested product that has been through a lot through Cape Cod and these nice nor'easters like we one we had the other day. Um, and it can stand that test of time and it can perform. So. Um, with that, we've also taken our full divided light product in the 400 series, and that's where we're putting grills both permanently on the inside uh, and then the exterior, as well as a spacer bar in between. And you're going to see that those U values have improved uh, down to a 0 0.30. So that gets us to meet a lot of what the expectations are within the energy code. And so again, with that 400 series product, we're meeting uh, those requirements. You've seen and heard some talk about the fiberglass mulling system. Now, this system for mulling, and those of you who have used it, we'd always ask for feedback. You're gonna see some more in a video from Shepley's who's done a fantastic job in their shop, has gone through all these products and, and know how to use them. And you're gonna see a great video that shows a job that's ongoing right now uh, as to how they use that. But it's the only mulling system that is certified for water and air. So when I call and say a window has a PG performance, this fiberglass mulling system will meet those same requirements for air and water. And as far as I know, it's the only one in the industry that does meet those certifications for air and water. So you're gonna get a nice video that Shepley's done a great job with uh, to kind of carry you through that later. And with that performance, that's how we're meeting codes because we need to meet codes with products. The Shepley Showcase, um, I don't think Tony can be any prouder than the employees that work in there that have dedicated themselves to selling just doors and windows. So don't ask them about two by eights, two by tens, roofing. They sell Anderson doors and windows and, and can provide you with that information. Uh, it's a great resource. It should be an extension of your business because uh, they can assist you if you have questions. You encourage your customers to come to the showroom. Like I said, products are on full display um, and you can hear it straight from the experts. So I, I do appreciate those folks. They make my job a lot easier. Uh, you have Didi there in the service department taking charge of Mark Hambly and Dave Marinelli, giving them all that information that they need to be successful in the service side. And their service team wins annual awards for the best service uh, for Anderson across the country. So that's something to be said for that. I don't expect you to read this because this is about code and a code is always blurry. But what I will tell you, what you see in these upcoming videos are gonna help you get through code. And, and the basic thing is code requirement is, is that you install windows and doors per manufacturer's instructions. So our instructions aren't to say, put this window in for Anderson. They're to put it in to meet code, meet those requirements and get through the project successfully so that we don't have any fall downs uh, through the process. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over uh, to the videos. You're gonna watch the video and then you're gonna have Mark Hambly do a little Q&A afterwards. So again, thank you for your business and we'll, we'll see you a little bit later.
installs or some service stuff. Uh, today we're going to show you a little bit inside, inside view of what happens here at the Anderson Shepley Door and Window Shop. And to my right here is uh, Mr. Joe, Joe LeBlanc. Yes. Joe, Hi. why don't you tell us a little bit uh, about what, uh, what goes on here in the shop? Uh, well, we assemble windows. We put together um, bow windows, bay windows. We also mall windows, and we also do the new fiberglass mall system. Awesome. How many, um, how many uh, frames do you think you did this year? Probably about 200. Yeah. Yeah, I did a lot of frames this year. That was great. I mean, we had a great year yeah. for frames. Yes. And let me just say, uh, the frames are... Um, they're not like the 400 series frame. There's a little bit more involved when it comes to assembling these things. And Joe's going to talk about some of those things, some of the key features, and and uh, as we get into the nuts and bolts with the assembly of this frame. Okay. All right. So why don't we uh, get right into the Anderson A series frame, which we have on the table here. It's a 1110 unit, so it's a pretty good size unit. Um, Joe, though, that's the bag of components that that the frame comes with, right there. Yes. Right. You mind right. just kind of going through some of those? components with us that are in that bag okay so this comes with your your kit in the in the uh, frame and it comes in a bag and so one of the components are right here is a sill end cap mm -hmm. and this end cap has a channel that goes through here to show where you put to put your, your ceiling. silicone sealing mm -hmm. and these right here go in this area here. So obviously you have a left and a right end cap plug, right? I have a left and it, right. Now was in. there a type of sealant that we're supposed to be using? Like a specific, can you use any kind of sealant? No. Anderson, okay. Anderson, Anderson suggests that we use the 794 um, silicone glaze and sealant. Okay. And this is the product right okay. here. So you're not gonna get a tube like that in the frame box, is that? No, is that's, that correct? That's, that's something that's that we correct. just bring in, we bring in full We tubes. bring that in, okay. we get a little tube Okay. which we uh which is plenty the little tool will do but right you know we okay. use this yes okay and now then, i notice you got yeah. um different colored screws here yes okay you have the stainless steel screws here that go into your sill okay and then sense. you have your brass screw that goes into the head so when you're assembling the head jam the okay. head jam yep. yes yep also there's a packet with uh, little stainless steel screws that also goes into the head mm -hmm. head jam mm -hmm. Um, they go on the very top, okay. um, and we'll uh, we'll kind of go over that later on because yeah. there's a there's a there's a reason there's an injection port, right? Yes. That's and that, gonna point yes. So let's talk about the bottom here. So yeah, what are the key things uh, when you're assembling the side jam to the sill? I mean, I, yes. you can't just put these screws in to get. I mean, you can't just put the screws in without any no. system, right? No. So what I do usually first thing I'll take the side jam, bring it down. Mm -hmm. I'll caulk here, yep. then I'll caulk, follow the channel, mm -hmm. and then I'll take a screw and I'll open this port right here. Okay. Because that's the injection port. Okay. Oops. Okay. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then I will slide it down, mm -hmm. and then I'll take, take the, the sill screw here, and then I'll just tack it in. I won't go all the way in. Okay. Okay. So we did talk about that earlier. That was the uh, that was the uh, jam plug, and mm -hmm. what this screw does, right, is what? Right. What does that do? Does that secure that kind of keep it so well, it doesn't so it doesn't slide up inside the jam here when you're doing the bottom? Um, well, it just tacks us in and holds it yep. for temporarily. And the reason I do not go all the way tight mm -hmm. is so when I inject down here, there's room for the silicone to fill and come through and mm -hmm. and inject into the side, side into of the, the inside edge, right. right. Yeah, because yes. when you're putting these frames together, the big thing is um, not just slapping a whole bunch of sealant on there. There's, there's a system and a sequence to how these screws go together with the frame, right? Yes. And also making yes. sure that you're in, using the injection ports Yes. to make sure you're pumping that cavity so you want to make sure that you're getting squeeze out, right? Yeah. Now, if we don't see squeeze out, we're not, yeah. we don't have enough, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, you keep on injecting until you see squeeze out on the other side right. where it's fully injected over on the here inside edge, on right. the inside edge. Cool. So after that's done, then I tighten this up, mm -hmm. put that screw, this first screw here, this screw in, and then I have, there's another injection port. 
There's an injection port on the bottom. On the of, bottom of that end cap? Of the end cap. Okay, yep. Okay, then I inject that and the cock will come out usually through a little hole here and through up over here. It usually shows up right on the front yep. edge of that. And, and then there's a little hole mm -hmm. down here mm -hmm. to show that it's, it's, right. it's full. But I usually let that come out and then that it comes out here also. Right. And then I'll screw that bottom screw in. Awesome. And that's, that's, that should be very well sealed. Okay. Um, the corner keys, uh, all I do is just make sure they're, they are there. Um, and then they're in the proper they're place. They're in the proper, not. yes. I make sure they're tight yep. up against there. Yep. That's about it. Yep. Um, so the first thing I, I do is I'll pop off the bumper. Okay. And that's so it doesn't interfere when I put the two piece, the, the side jam and the head jam together. Okay. Sometimes it, you can see it goes past. Mm -hmm. So I take that out so I don't have no interference. Mm -hmm. So after I do that, then I take my sealant and I, I go along this edge right here. And then I go up, up here on the jam. I fill this all in all in here and then I go up in here also so here up there and around the key okay then I'll take the sealant and fill inject in here and fill this till it starts coming out mm -hmm. this cavity and then I'll go run down the sealant again down through here so all these all these sealant yes um, procedures that you're doing right now? Yes. Are these just something that you made up or is this Anderson? Is this how Anderson recommends this it? This is what Anderson recommends, but I probably, I do a little Add a little extra. bit more? Yes. Okay. Just okay. to make sure it's done. You can always wipe out that, okay. the access. Okay. Do you yes. want to just put this, um, join these two corners together sure. and we can show, uh, we can show the injection ports. So, so then I take, take the both of them and I just slide it in like so. And then, um, so the first thing I do after I put it together, here's an injection port right here. Mm -hmm. And then I'll take the sealant. And you can see right here, it says inject silicone. Mm -hmm. Yes, they tell you to do that. And that's on both sides, right? Both sides, yep. Mm -hmm. So I, I'll inject it until I see the, the silicone coming out through the other screw hole over here. Mm -hmm. And that means that all this cavity in here is filled. It's filled, right. right. And that's important to keep everything together. So after that's done, then I will take the screw and I'll screw, put a screw here. That's one of these that's small ones. One of these right? small screws. Yep. Yep. So I'll take this screw here mm -hmm. and I'll screw this one first. And then that'll I'll just screw. fill that injection port. Yes. Yep. And then I'll screw the side and this will close this up nice and tight. Yep. And then I'll take my br three brass screws and then I'll screw the top right down to the bottom with the three screws, each one. And, that and that'll, might have nice that'll and pull me right. Yep. <clears throat> then after that, I'll take uh, my corner pad and I'll set it on the corner, stick it onto the corner like so. And that will be like that. Okay. Yep. And then I'll make, and then I'll put back the bumper because mm -hmm. that is off mm -hmm. and I'll put back and then I'll go and do the same process on the other corner. So once this thing is completely assembled, yep. what's the next step? Um, once is they're not getting it prepared to ship. Well, no, then, well, these will be up snapped mm -hmm. on a normal assembly. Right. So I'll come, come and I will, I will um, use the silicone and go right down, all, right, down all, right down the flange right. all the way around the frame. Right. So that's pretty awesome. So, yeah. so when this frame gets out to the field, out to you guys, this is ready to be installed. Okay. Like Joe said, the flanges are up in place. It's been silicone. The corner pads are on. All you have to do is back cock the inside corners and do your rough opening you know, and set this frame into the opening. So, so Joe, I understand that you just completed a uh, fiberglass mull system in the shop here that was uh, pretty big. Yes. Would you like to tell us a little bit about it? Yes, it was a multi-window unit, uh, window over window. 
and uh, the, it was a fiberglass mold, which made it a lot easier to put together. And also we could send pieces of it out to the job site where it makes it easy to install and make it a full unit. Well, that sounds awesome. Joe, thank you very much for being here today, going over this stuff and thanks for all your help. And uh, let's check out that video. Welcome to our Anderson Shepley shop. Here today, I'm gonna show you a unit that we're putting together, plainly a very big unit. It's gonna be 14 feet wide by seven feet tall. Now, in the past, we've done these units and it's very difficult to move these out to the job site. You gotta get a big crew, you gotta have a lull on site, and sometimes the situations don't allow for an easy install. Um, the system we're gonna tell you, show you today from Anderson just came out. It's a fiberglass mall system. It has replaced three previous systems that Anderson has had. And it's really a game changer for how we do large units in the field. There are two fiberglass plates that get applied to the units. Uh, one has a red stripe going down it. The opposing side has no stripe. And they literally, in the field, the units can interlock together to make one unit. It is simple as that click in the field. Um, behind me here, you see two units that have been assembled. We have a fiberglass mall running through the center this way. Then we have one piece of fiberglass, if I can get that apart, with a red stripe on this side. This single unit is gonna be lifted up in the field, placed in the opening, and then the next corresponding unit will be locked into it. So the advantages of this from the builder's perspective, one, we've got a controlled environment here where we're taking all the components in from the factory and putting them together. Two, you're gonna get them shipped out to you, ready to install. They're not boxed up, they're not wrapped up in a bunch of parts and pieces in an environment where it's not easy to put together. The most important part though, is we're taking a big unit and making it smaller, manageable, and safe for the install. And when it goes out in the field, these can be installed successively to make that massive unit in the field. And you're not trying to maneuver a 14 foot unit that weighs probably north close to a thousand pounds into an opening, which can be really, really tricky. Um, so far, the feedback from our builders, they love this system. The feedback from us here in the shop is we love the system because we now only work with one component system to mull all the units together, whether it be a French wood door to a transom, whether it be a slider to a side light, whether it be a custom unit like the one you see in front of you. Uh, it's one system, it's a clean install, and it's fast from beginning to end. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that inside look at the Shepley window and door shop. Those guys just do amazing work down there and I can't be more proud to work with those guys. Before we get into the uh, Q&A portion of tonight, I did wanna take a moment and talk about installation. Like the fiberglass mulling system that we just saw a video on, it's really important that we follow the manufacturer's installation procedures. Now, I always refer back to the five critical steps of a, of a proper install and I start with a pan system. A flexible pan system works best before you install the window, you wanna make sure that you're back sealing at four corners uh, behind the flange. Now, before you put the unit into the rough opening, you wanna make sure you're doing the barrier method install and that you're sealing behind all four flanges. Now, once the window is in the opening, you wanna make sure that that's shimmed up off the rough sill. That assures that we're getting insulation up underneath that area and shimming at side jams when needed. Now to finish up the install, after you flash the unit, you wanna make sure you're doing a perimeter bead all the way around the perimeter of the unit. And with that, I'll start the Q&A portion of the questions tonight. Joe, what do we have? Thanks, Mark. Uh, this is your reminder. If you do have any questions for Mark or the team, uh, please uh, use your Zoom Q&A feature on the bottom of your screen. Uh, first question is when there are multiple units like the fiberglass mulling system, that are shipped to the job site, how does the installer know which unit is to be installed first and what order are they to be installed? That's a great question, Joe. And uh, so down in our shop when we were putting, out, and I'll just go back to the uh, fiberglass mulling system that we saw a video on, we actually labeled the units in sequence. And what we did also is we actually brought in the installer and brought them down so they could get a, 
they could get to actually look at what we were doing there and how we were labeling things. And so they could, we could go through the whole procedure with them and really review the injection ports as well. Uh, yeah, next question is, besides the fiberglass mole itself, what makes this system structural when you install it into the opening, into the rough opening? So with the, with the fiberglass mull system, with that particular system, you have half gusset plates. Actually, let me show you a half gusset plate. I have one here tonight. This would be your half gusset plate. And this is gonna be installed behind the flange at the tops of each unit and at the bottom of each unit. So when the units get installed into the opening, they're gonna click in and you'll be able to secure, you know, with screws, you know, through this. And that's what gives you your structure as well. Next question. Can the sliding door units be shipped um, with panels already installed? So with two panels, the two panel sliders, we can get those ordered from the factory. The only problem is when you're getting into a four panel slider, because of the size of that, it has to come knocked down. But the good news is we can have those frames set up in our shop and we do, we do a lot of that stuff. That's all the questions we have. If you have any additional questions, uh, make sure to reach out to your sales team or service team or showcase team, and we will get them answered uh, and get right back to you. Uh, but now we have the showcase showdown video from Tammy Beer Santos, who is your window and door specialist for the Mid Cape, Barnstable, and Chatham. Good evening, everyone. Thank you again for coming um, to our annual Anderson dinner. This year has been definitely challenging with COVID, but thank you all. We've had some great projects we've gotten to work with you on. So here's a little synopsis of everything I've gotten to experience with you. Um, thank you. So this first one is a project in Harwich that was a renovation. As we all know, renovation is the thing right now. Um, this was your typical 12 over 12, really busy. You couldn't see through it. We got to open it up. All the openings were perfect. Went in with some tilt wash windows into those nice wood window openings, six over one and opened it up. The side of the house had this great bay window, but it was tiny little squares. Now we got to see through the window. We still have the alignment with that short fractional and we got to keep the, the double hungs on the side. I think that was a success and the homeowner is really happy. This was another renovation in West Yarmouth. So as you can see in the picture on the left, it was very, uh, kind of sad looking as the homeowner told me. I got called over there to measure a couple windows and we totally changed the house because the homeowner didn't like it. So on the right is where we starting to go in the renovation. So on the left, you can see this is a very 1980s house with the radius over the kitchen window. We took that out, we put in a big picture window. Now that trim will align with the top of the cabinets and be really beautiful, um, opening up the view without that vertical post in the middle. Same house, master bedroom. I don't know what it was in the 80s, but we liked those radiuses. Um, Again, it made the room a little odd. So we opened that up, put a picture window, a nice transom over it to just get some kind of feel on the house of some detail, but still have a beautiful view to the beach. Same house, like I said, I was there for quite some time. It went from a couple windows to let's redesign this house. So as you can see on the left, more radiuses. We we were tied to them with the 12 foot door, but that was only six, eight back in the day. So we took that out and we put a 10 foot by eight foot door and we built the transom right into the door. So now when we open it, that transom will disappear. They'll have a gorgeous view and it's all open. This is the tower stairway in there. And again, more radiuses. So we took them out, we put that simulated check rail in there again, just to kind of make it pop a little bit more. She felt that that seven eighths wouldn't be heavy enough to really give that look on the house. And I think it made the stairway really attractive. 
Then we did get to do some new construction stuff. And this is a commercial project that we did in Barnstable. This is a gorgeous barn. And because commercial still has to be impact by code, we had to use some tilt wash impact windows here. So please be aware, we still have them. Still a great resource. And Anderson can still provide those items for you. Um, again, that was the 400 series. We did the black. Black has still become really, really popular right now. So it, I think it fit great with that barn side. Here's the inside view. This is going to be a great place. So if you need some organic vegetables, stop in in Barnstable. This is gorgeous. This made my day. You know, we all live here and we don't take advantage of, uh, of where we are. This is Millway and this is a new construction, but this just shows the breadth of what Anderson can do. This is a 16 foot door. And I think we all just think of that as common nowadays, but look at the difference that that can make. Again, this is that same residence and the homeowner was very uh, particular about what they wanted because of this gorgeous view. So if you didn't know, Anderson can now make that picture window. It was eight feet by five feet facing the ocean. That is a series. You get a DP 50 on your rating. So you don't have to worry about the performance facing that water and you can take the most of the view. This is the outside of that. So you can see that 16 foot door with the eight foot picture window above balances it out really nicely. This is, uh, is where I started my career with Anderson. This is E-Series. Um, this is, I think, pretty, pretty phenomenal. And everyone keeps telling me I should have take, stood by this window because this window is four feet wide by seven foot seven tall. I'm five two, so that would have looked really kind of neat. Um, but Anderson can do some amazing things nowadays. So if you don't think they can, don't hesitate to ask. This is E-Series as well. This is a gorgeous um, oval window. Again, don't hesitate to ask. This oval window is three feet wide by four foot 10. I know these things kind of seem odd and I'm talking about a lot of sizes tonight when I usually don't, but it's just amazing how far Anderson has come in the things that we do that, you know, if you are from the old school, you don't think that Anderson can do what they can. A uh, beautiful picture window with the Gothic grills. Those grills are inch and a half. So they really stand out at the top of that window. Um, E-series, again, this whole house was E-series. This is a new construction. I know, again, we did a lot of remodeling through COVID, but this, you know, we, we were lucky enough to get some of these new projects going as well. We got these trapezoids in that same house with all of those arches and circles and things along those lines. So I thought this was really cool. Um, and this was probably the most work of my career at tip to this point. So all of those curves and arches on there, really dramatic out in Chatham. It is absolutely gorgeous. I can't wait till this is done. But when you take a look of what that creates outside, it really is a statement piece. And, you know, Anderson should really be proud of what they can do. And that's my year. And I thank you all so much because it really was great working with all of you. And I appreciate the trust that you put in us and in Anderson to help you. Thank you. Well, welcome back everyone. Thank you for attending again tonight. Um, I'm hoping you have some good questions for me. Joe, what do we know? We do have a few questions. And as a reminder, if you do have any questions, uh, use your Zoom Q&A feature on the bottom of your screen. Uh, first question is, what color jam liners come with a black 400 series window? That's a great question and one that we get in the showroom all the time. So your two options for 400 series jam liners are gray and white, but it's a really important question to ask your homeowner when you're doing projects that you have a black exterior and a white interior, because that jam liner is gonna appear inside the home and outside the home. So sometimes it's easy to say white, 
but we need to remind the homeowners and meet their expectations and have them understand that that will be apparent on the outside as well. So great question. And it's really important to make sure that the homeowners get what they want. Great, next question. Um, how tall do you, uh, the Anderson patio doors come? Now we're really happy to say in A series, we can get doors as tall as 10 feet tall. Great, next question is from Brendan. Any changes to the color of the 400 series exterior Fibrex white? No, Anderson is tried and true. So you, if you have a window in one part of your house that's 20 years old, it's still gonna be the same Anderson white. You can go to Sherwin-Williams. They have all of those Anderson color codes, whether it be the white or the black or the forest green. So Sherwin-Williams is your resource for those colors, but that white is gonna stay tried and true. Next question is, what Munton widths are offered with the A-series windows? Um, we offer the three quarters, the seven eighths, inch and an eighth, and we can do a two and a quarter um, simulated check rail. So that's all the questions we have time for. Um, as a reminder, if you have any questions that weren't answered tonight, uh, please reach out to your sales team and uh, your window specialist, Tammy Beer Santos. She is supported at Shepley by their, uh, the, the showcase team for Barnstable, Yarmouth and Chatham. Uh, Tammy, Candace, and Cassidy, and of course, uh, backed up by the whole showcase staff, and we're happy to uh, reach out to you and help your customers as well. Uh, we do have a little bit of homework uh, for our presentation tonight. Um, as part of our presentation, we recommend viewing our installation videos, um, and we have created a playlist on our YouTube channel. Uh, with all installation videos that you'll need for your jobs, including the installation of an A-series patio door, gliding patio door, hinge patio door, and A-series double hung windows. And now with some closing comments is our own Tony Shepley. Thank you very much, Joe. And you know, this has been great. It's been, a, it's been a whole different experience. We want to thank all of you out there for attending virtually. And as we mentioned earlier, certificates for continuing ed will be emailed to you by the end of the week. Now, if you did have those questions tonight that we weren't quite able to answer because of a little time constraint or you, you didn't think of the right question yet, we will be able to follow up with you tomorrow. Please get in touch with us. Uh, click on your screen right now while we still continue to run. Let us know what's on your mind. Now, our friend Brian Harding, Anderson Territory Manager extraordinaire, is someone that we've worked with for many, many years. And I'd like to take a moment to talk with Brian about his involvement and my involvement with the Home Builders and Remodelers Association of Cape Cod. But Brian, what got you started and what has kept you, kept you involved with the Home Builders and Remodelers Association of Cape Cod? Well, Tony, if you're in the industry on Cape Cod, it's a great organization. I think a lot of the times, just like me, like an Anderson rep, I'm one of 200. But most of the time, I feel like I'm on my own. So I know with you as contractors, you're on your own job. You think everyone's against you, but everybody's in the same boat. And what I found out is like when we had the DCPC, you know, you remember that little one, Tony? I'm trying to forget. <laughs> so it took the power of a group of folks uh, to basically give the side from the home builders. So we need that word. And when we form a group and we have many voices instead of a single voice, we tend to make progress. There were things like that. There were even things like impact glass, um, you name it. Um, wind speed. Wind speed, <laughs> sprinklers in homes, those types of things. So when you have the force of a whole group and I encourage you, even if you have something locally um, in your town, Rather than fight it as individuals within a town, if you can make Chris Flanagan or the staff at HBRAC aware of it, we're willing to support that, uh, help you out and, and get through it. But most important, Tony, what I like are the networking events, right? I'm never, I, I know your favorite. I'm never shy about <laughs> golf, but my all-time favorite event, and we only had a chance to do it once, but I guarantee you these events are going to come back. Giant Jenga. So we did Giant Jenga down at the Hog Island Brewery, and I think everybody enjoyed themselves. It was a great time, and I promise you, we'll be back to having those great events sooner than, than we know. So thank you all, and support the HBRACC.
ladies and gentlemen, the old phrase, united we stand, divided we fall. We need to work together as an industry. We need to support each other. At Shepley, we believe in the, in the power and the importance of HBRAC. And if you are not yet a member of the Home Builders and Remodelers Association of Cape Cod, we will help you with $100 towards your first year's membership and we'll spread the balance over the th next three months with no interest. Just simply let us know you'd like to join and we can bill you right through your Shepley Charge account. So before we wrap up tonight's event, I think it's time to show you the money. Brian, what are we going to offer our viewers tonight in the way of special discounting on their next Anderson project? Good point, Tony. We know your time is valuable. You've probably worked all day. We thought the dinner might be enough. We thought the offer on HBRAC might be enough, but we'd like to give you a little bit more. So with Shepley and Anderson, uh, from now until March 19th, if you make a purchase of A series or E series windows and the cost is $7,500 or more, we're gonna give you an additional 5%. So that'll pay for your HBRAC membership right there. All right, so that's 5% on top of any other discount. That's an additional 5%. Brian, I love having you around. Well, then we better tell them about the rest of it. All right. If it's a 200 or 400 series job and it's $5,500 or more, we're gonna offer that same 5%. Now, you know, this is the part where I have to talk about the little print on the coupon. So basically there's only one opportunity to use that offer and it's not in conjunction with any other offers. But just see your Shepley contact, either through the showcase or your outside rep like Tammy. What a great job she did with those projects. Um, Tammy is an expert at what she does, and she's an asset to both Anderson and Shepley. Or you can call me, and I'll help you out. But we do appreciate you attending. Uh, we do think it deserves something for showing up. And you get two credits as well for your CSL. So I think we've got them full, Tony. <laughs> we filled their menu tonight. <laughs> well, everybody did a great job. And Brian, you always do a great job. We love working with you. We want to thank you for joining us tonight. We want to thank all of our Anderson specialists like Tammy, who, who did such an awesome job tonight. We want to thank our sales teams. I'll tell you, let's give a, out a thanks to our, our unsung heroes, our operations crew for all that they do every day. How about administration folks, all the people who work upstairs, who take care of all of our business and special thanks to our marketing team of Dan Whiting and Colleen Fry, because they make this happen. But our, special, special, special in-house video production team led by our very own Cecil B. DeMille, the one and only John Howell, who brings the magic of video presentation to Shepley. Uh, this has been a combination of live and taped. And I'll tell you, it's a, just such a pleasure to come to you this way. I think this is the future. But most of all, thanks to all of you, our valued customers. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your trust. Thank you for your business. We want you to stay safe. We want you to stay well, and we need you to stay focused. Thank you very much, and good night.